Welcome, everyone, to All Elite Wrestling's Unrestricted. It's our official podcast, Tony Schiavone, along with Aubrey Edwards. Hi. Hey, Aubrey, how are you? Good, how are you? Great. We, we're with Tony Khan once again. Tony, it's great to see you, buddy. How nice are you? you. Thanks for having me on again. I, I appreciate always uh, your guys' time, and it's fun to sit here and talk about the pay-per-view and Dynamite with you guys. It definitely doesn't feel like a pay-per-view unless we've done like the podcast right. with TK. To right. Kick everything off. It's it 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 gives a, a really a great momentum to our to our pay per views, and this is a special week for us. Yes. Uh, before I, w- I want to get into the card to give the rundown of the card, but uh, I, I want to uh, hit on one thing first, Tony. Uh, a year ago, we had just unveiled Dynamite, yep. and momentum was rolling. And a month later, we had uh, full gear in Baltimore, had a great crowd, and boy, things have changed so much. Oh, obviously, boy. in a year. And how does did that change your approach to this pay per view at all? I think this would have been the same strong card. I mean, I think things would have happened differently along the way that would have changed it. So it would have been different iterations. But I think we there's no way we could have presented a stronger card, and under any circumstances, I think uh, I'd love to be able to pack a building safely with fans, and it's just not possible. Sure. So what we're doing is everything we can do in our power to have a show with fans, with the energy of a great crowd. But doing it safely with outdoor show, with physically distanced fans, in masks, and seated in these seating pods that are kind of spaced out. I mean, they are spaced out. And uh, by keeping people separate, I think, uh, and keeping uh, the secondary ticket market from splitting these pods up and putting strangers together, where it's like all, you know, social groups hanging out and, and trying to limit any mixing and trying to keep people from jamming into the bathrooms or any of the concourses. I mean, we're really uh, enforcing, we're enforcing the masks and I think it's, it's working. And so we've got a great crowd and what it's been able to do is we've got uh, this pay-per-view where we got maybe our best lineup. I think probably our best lineup yeah, we've ever had. For it's it's easily the best pay-per-view card I think we've ever done. Yeah. I, and I really appreciate you guys saying that. It makes me, I've, a lot of people have been saying it and I feel confident of going into the show that it's the strongest show we've presented. And I want everybody at home to know that if you want to see a wrestling show with a great crowd, you're going to get it. There's going to be a great crowd there. There's going to be a thousand people, but the building's going to be running at about 20% capacity with people spaced out throughout uh, Daly's Place, and it's going to be a great show. And we're sold out. We are sold out. Man, yeah. Very cool. All right, let's take a look at the uh, let's take a look at the card. Yes. Uh, on top, the AEW World Championship will be decided as John Moxley takes on Eddie Kingston in an I Quit match. And then we've got a tag team dream match: FTR versus the Young Bucks. Uh, TNT t- title match: right. Cody versus Darby. The fourth time they faced off. Right. I'm particularly excited about this one. AEW Women's Championship: Akaro Shida will defend against former champion Nyla Rose and the Eliminator Tournament Final. Boy, I can't wait for this one. Oh. Kenny Omega against Hangman Adam Page. The winner will get a world title shot down the road. And then how about Chris Jericho's next match, huh? Chris Jericho and MJF. Uh, mm-hmm. If MJF wins, he gets to join the inner circle. So I think all of us are kind of asking the question of, oh, is, is this actually going to happen? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. Well, we'll see. The uh, elite deletion match, which we've got a lot to talk about there, obviously. Ooh. Matt Hardy against Sammy Guevara. And then Orange Cassidy takes on John Silver of the Dark Order. Oh, this is this is... This is a dream match for me, yeah. honestly. <laughs> so, Tony, we also we want to talk about the buy-in match that we have. Of course, the buy-in begins at 7.30. 8 o'clock is when the pay-per-view starts. Serena Deeb, the new NWA Women's Champ, will take on Allison Kay, a former champion. Man, we, we mentioned before how stacked that lineup is, but wow, that's that's eight great matches, nine great matches when you consider the buy-in. Yeah, and then we suddenly added this match last night on Dynamite. Like, that's incredible. Yeah, this, uh, <laughs> this just got added yesterday, and I think it's really exciting because Billy and I spoke, and uh, Serena just became the champion last week. Yes. And with Serena as the new champion, having just come to Dynamite last week to defend her title, I thought that yesterday would be, you know, a great time to ask Billy about having her make another defense. But this time, you know, at the buy-in, uh, and it would be a great opportunity to showcase the NWA to the world because there's going to be this huge audience uh, on our pay-per-views. So it's a, it's a win-win for both companies, and it's a, it's the kind of relationships we like to have with other wrestling companies, which is great. But, uh, you know, everyone's going to get a chance to see a great match, and Serena is a great AEW wrestler. And Fantastic. I think the NWA is fortunate to have such a great champion as Serena, and I think we're fortunate to have such a great star. She's great. Allison Kay is a former champion. They were supposed to have a match a couple months back uh, several weeks ago uh, on pay-per-view for another company. It did not happen, 
And now it is happening here on the buy-in. So everyone's going to get to see that match for free. They don't have to pay for it. And I'm really excited about it. And uh, it's a great chance, uh, like I said, to work with other companies. But it's a great chance to showcase uh, one of our top new stars who signed in 2020, which is Serena Deeb. Serena is uh, tremendous, yeah. I, let me ask you this. You, you, you're a, a master at wrestling trivia. When was the last time, has there ever been two separate women's world titles defended on the same night on a big card? It's uh, hard it, may, to say. it may be the first time. or it's, So, I mean, certainly to have two uh, such prestigious championships uh, defended on the same night, it would be the first time. And, uh, you know, the other uh, match we have coming up, uh, the other women's world championship match, the AEW women's world championship match is going to be great also. But this is a great match. Everyone can get for free. This NWA uh, women's world title match is a great chance uh, to see one of our best uh, stars, Serena, one of our best veterans, and, mm -hmm. and one of our top hands. And to see her in with uh, somebody who the NWA has had as their former champion, who we're just getting to know here in AEW, but she's uh, she's tremendous, and I think we're all looking forward to seeing Allison Kay, and she's formerly wrestled uh, for Impact and other companies. So we'll see uh, her, her get her first chance here in AEW. That'll be great, and I think that's a great match to start the show and uh, lead us into the pay-per-view card. Full gear, it's going to be... Uh, so awesome, and uh, I'm just really excited to run it down with you guys, but I'm also really excited about what both of you are going to do on the show because you're both such important parts of the show. Aww. Thanks, buddy. I uh, Let's remind everyone that uh, 8 o'clock is when the pay-per-view begins. Uh, you can uh, certainly uh, contact sat uh, satellite and cable providers. Uh, it's on the BR Live, as always, and we'll take the air at 7 o'clock with... Orange Cassidy against John Silver of the Dark Order. Now, oh boy. Orange Cassidy has obviously had a, a sensational run in AEW, but John Silver's made quite a name for himself as of late. I feel like this match is Internet Darling versus Internet Darling in a way. It, yeah, maybe because so. Orange Cassidy is everyone's favorite wrestler. So whether you're new to AEW or you're a longtime fan, if you followed Orange Cassidy prior to AEW or here, like yeah. he's, he's everyone's favorite wrestler, right? Right. And John Silver has just become this... Uh, incredible person on being the elite every single week. Like, I don't know how he can possibly get funnier, but it's been great to see all of that characteristic come through in his wrestling. Well, that's, well. you know, the story of how that came to be. I don't no. know. You, so the story of how that came to be, that it became more of a thing on the show is I've been watching being the elite and I saw John Silver on being the elite and he had a lot more personality than he had on Dynamite. So much. So I ribbed him <laughs> and everyone was in on it. And I got to John and I'd said to him, uh, John, I want to talk to you. And he came in and I said, John, I'm really upset. I'm really mad at you. And, uh oh, and, oh no. Uh, he was, That's oh, never no, something you it? want the boss and to say. I said that, uh, yeah, I'm really upset because you got this great personality and you're showing it off on being the elite. And where has this been on dynamite? And then he wiped the beat of sweat off his brow. And in all seriousness, like he's <laughs> turned it up a notch and then another notch. And then recently in the past few weeks, he's turned it up another couple notches, and it's been awesome. He has really screwed over Orange Cassidy in some mm -hmm. big matches. Uh, when Orange Cassidy had the chance to become the TNT champion against Brody, he got involved. But then again, out of spite, he got involved in his match against Cody as a follow-up. And these guys have got a, a, a real rivalry brewing, and I think it's going to be an awesome match. And we saw last night on Dynamite these guys teeing off on each other uh, over and over again, we've seen it. And I think uh, it's going to be an awesome match, and it's uh, going to be a great way to get the show going. I think it's going to be a tremendous, tremendous match for the pay-per-view. So anyway, Orange Cassidy, John Silver, uh, I, I had originally announced it for the buy-in. Right. And it's the second show in a row where there was such demand for a match, and people said, like, I would pay this sh to see this match. I would pay to see this match. And it was... Okay. Don't put your money yeah. where your mouth is. Right. Then you're gonna. Well, pay you know what? That's fine. Uh, you convinced me. So uh, I'm gonna put it on the pay per view. I think it's the right move to do. And then uh, we were able to get a great match uh, to replace it on the card. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we, you know it's a win win because now Serena gets to uh, take on a top challenger for a title, a former champion in the NWA. It's great for the NWA and it's great for Serena. And hopefully. Uh, you know, it's as the AEW representing AEW, you know, I, I hope that uh, is a great way to get the show going. But now to Orange and Silver on the pay-per-view, it's a win-win for, for us. And uh, for all those great fans that, you know, watch Orange Cassidy on Dynamite and want to see him, I think, look, it's I, I do think it's worth the money. I had second thoughts about putting it on the buy-in. And uh, I think this is the right way to go. And I think uh, for everybody that wants to see it, I can't... Uh, encourage you enough to buy this show because the lineup was already considered the strongest lineup of the year before we put this on. Oh yeah. And as I, as I think you'll hear through this podcast, I think it is 
a great lineup yep. and there's a lot to this and orange and silver will be a great way to start the show it's it's already we're only in two matches both very very different matches and we're about to talk about a third and already this pay-per-view card is just absolutely incredible so we've got matt hardy and sammy guevara who have been going at it for for months now and in very violent ways and they're all coming to a head at this uh the elite deletion which is happening at the hardy compound and I'm terrified <laughs> because I know that these guys will just like, they will do anything. They want to make sure that they win, right? And both of them just have that that attitude and tenacity. They're just going to go for it. So this, this is going to be absolutely insane. Yeah, it's going to be nuts. I can't say enough uh, that I really, really want everybody to, uh, who hasn't seen Sammy Guevara wrestle, this Ooh. would be a great chance to see one of the best uh, upcoming stars in wrestling, somebody who since AEW's launch has become a mainstream star. Yeah, he's a huge part of Chris Jericho's faction, the inner circle, and Sammy Guevara is uh, one of our top stars. And I think uh, for him and Matt Hardy, it's been a long time coming. Matt's a wrestling legend, and uh, a match at the Hardy compound is never to be taken lightly. For, and uh, I think it'll no. be a great, great match. I'm, uh, I'm really excited for it. I uh, really enjoy... Uh, I enjoy both men very much, and I think this will be a great culmination uh, to what has been a brutal uh, rivalry for everyone involved, and I think uh, this will be uh, some finality to that situation, which has uh, been a long time coming. The two have had memorable moments and dangerous moments as well. I mean, and uh, you can only go back to the stadium stampede match and oh. build up to that. And oh. And Sammy getting run over by the the cart of the golf cart. Oh my god! I, how do I forget about the cart? <laughs> that, that started things. <laughs> really, it really goes show. back. And before that, in March, uh, we you know Sammy came out from under the ring and jumped Matt. And right, Matt showed up uh, the week before. So this guy really That's goes right. back to March right. and uh, the beginning of uh, the wow. shutdown. So it's it's a great uh, chance for this to be a, a culmination of a of a long rivalry and a brutal rivalry, and I think it's going to be a great match. It's just great seeing someone like Matt Hardy, who's a legend in most of our eyes, and Sammy Guevara, who's one of the future stars of the industry, and them facing off in this this massive match. So great. I love everything we're doing here. <laughs> so remember, the elite deletion match will be at the Hardy compound. And falls so. will count anywhere. Falls oh. will count anywhere. Okay. Yep. So that adds no an rules. element of danger. Oh, boy. No rules. So, well, it's we've, we've done crazy things before, so we can't wait to see that one. Again, the elite deletion match will be coming up we're talking with uh, tony khan and we're talking about full gear that is coming up this saturday night don't forget it's eight o'clock eastern seven central exclusively on pay-per-view and tony we've got uh six more matches we want to talk about and we'll do that in just a moment Great. one thing i'd like to talk about is state farm insurance and i say i like to talk about that because i've been a state farm customer a member if you will since 1981 since the year that i was married state farm as surprisingly great rates on both auto and homeowners. Tony, you've been a member of State Farm since before I was born. There you go. That means that they must have like great customer service. They've got yes, they agents do. available everywhere. Like to be a member of a company for that long, you have to be really, really happy with their policies. I'm happy with their policies. And now I'm happier, Aubrey, with their easy to use technology because back then you'd have to have the insurance card in your wallet. It was a paper insurance card or like a cardboard insurance card. Now you have it on your phone. You have, they have a great app and you have your insurance card right on your smartphone. So the technology that is advanced in the world has also advanced insurance in insurance thanks to our people at State Farm. So you can manage your coverage, pay your bill, file a claim all just from your phone. Some That's you already right. carry around with you. Who That's needs right. cardboard cards anymore? Jeez. No boy. <laughs> a, a great price with even greater service. So, Aubrey, as I always say, when you want the real deal. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. You say that all the time, Tony. I do. This is Aubrey Edwards and Tony Schiavone here with Tony Khan, All Wrestling Unrestricted. We're talking the Full Gear pay-per-view this Saturday, November 7th, 8 o'clock. 7 Central, pay-per-view, BR Live, Fight TV, lots of different ways to watch it. You absolutely should watch it. We've only gone over a couple of the matches so far, and they're all absolutely incredible, uh, including you know the buy-in and a few on the card. Uh, as we keep working through it, 
we're coming down to Chris Jericho versus MJF. And this is a really interesting one because we were just talking about Matt Hardy and Sammy Guevara, how you have this legend and a guy who's a future star in the business. And now we have, again, a legend that is Chris Jericho with MJF, who's, I mean, he he says it and he rubs it in everyone's face, but it's true. He's the total package. He's a great talker. He's a great wrestler. And seeing the two of them in the ring together for the first time is going to be quite exciting. The line I wrote was the complete package. And some, uh, let's some, just stick with a complete package. There's yeah, I got it. A total. I know that's what, not I, what I didn't total write. Package? I know what total package means. Yeah, in I didn't wrestling. Write, I, that's yeah. another. That's somebody else. I that's didn't write else. that. That's right. Exactly. Uh, but, uh, it's, um, it's just what came to me. What, I don't the, know. The, uh, <laughs> so, um, what I what I think about that match is that it's going to be tremendous bell to bell action. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be. Uh, a really interesting moment to see how this one comes out, whether MJF joins the inner circle, because the inner circle has been since the inception of dynamite, since our first episode, the inner circle has been really uh, front and foremost in this company. And Chris is our first champion and like so many, if not a majority of the biggest moments in the history of this company involve the inner circle. And so to have, uh, the inner circle possibly with MJF as a member is unthinkable, and the inner circle would definitely be the biggest force, not just in AEW, but I think the inner circle would be the talk of professional wrestling. So it would certainly be something. But on the other hand, uh, Chris is one of the biggest stars in wrestling, and uh, Chris's uh, defeats are few and far between, and I can't really see Chris uh, not winning this on pay-per-view. So it's going to be uh, really, really interesting because I think, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to imagine uh, – what could happen there? Because with Chris and Max, uh, two of the top stars, like we're saying, uh, one of the all-time top stars and one of the top stars of the present and the future. And I think, uh, yeah, it's got all the potential in the world to steal the show. I want to hit you with something uh, leading up to this match. is something that a lot of people have talked about, and it happened a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the two guys uh, doing the uh, oh god the uh, their dinner. And then debonair. The, the, the dinner debonair, and then their song that they did. And being a a big fan of musicals like I am, mm -hmm. I just absolutely loved it. I really did. Uh, everyone and, loved it. We're and, all popping in the back. And, well, not everyone loved it. <laughs> no, no, you're right. Not everyone loved it. The smart people loved okay, it. Okay, but, but we all loved it, and we I was did. very entertained by it. And talk about how that all developed. I, I know Chris has a uh, – and, you know, he has a – big say so on what he does but well i have the biggest say so on I, I, chris I, has a big say so i, 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 I realize that chris came in with uh, a lot chris comes in with a lot of ideas and and like with all things i think like mo almost every idea chris has is great and mm -hmm. uh, that idea i thought was great and i still think that idea to get buzz on this match and build their story and it's brought in a ton of attention and then the follow-up the town hall which again i would say is more of a conventional wrestling segment uh in a lot of ways than this did incredibly well. And all Chris's ideas, so many of them are great. And with what you see Chris doing, a lot of it is just Chris's own ideas. Right. And uh, I love working with Chris and putting together uh, stuff for the show. And Chris has ideas for other people, too. He's a he's a phenomenal wrestling genius. And this was uh, uh, something where Chris came in and he pitched uh, a, the one thing on this little grid of stuff that I really took exception to was he pitched a dream sequence that it would be a dream sequence where they would start singing and like it would be like his dream and i was like no we're not doing, we're not going to do that no and <laughs> this is uh, real life that's, that's uh, <laughs> this is wrestling but it's real life yeah, so uh <laughs> it's like uh you know it's i got to we can't do that and i i can't uh cannibalize a show like that but i sure. i do um love the idea of chris and max singing because Chris is a great singer, and Max uh, has a background in theater and singing. Yes, yes he does. And both We've all guys seen have the Twitter videos. Great voices. Both guys have great voices. And I think that it, for me, uh, I'm a huge, huge fan of both guys. Uh, and I thought that this could be great. And I love the idea of them singing, going out for the steak dinner. I think it's tremendous. If I could do something again in hindsight, and we all agreed on this, and I was, I brought this up, and everyone thought it was a good point. I think I would have done it in the ring. Ooh. I would have rather done it in the ring, and I should. I think it would have been challenging to do it live, but we could have even taped it in the ring, and I think it could have come off great, but I think having it be between the ropes and uh, in the squared circle would have been the way to go. But the, the hindsight's twenty twenty. but I think the, the idea of it was great. Now, I was not going to do it as a dream sequence, but I thought that was uh, the idea of Chris and Max singing really appealed to me, and it still does. 
And uh, I think there's a lot to it. And uh, it, so it definitely created a conversation around this match. But there's a lot more to talk. But that, that's why it worked, because it was yes. Chris and Max. Like, because it was talent. Yes. Yeah, right. Uh, because uh, now they're going to come out and have a wrestling match. And anybody who watches wrestling wants to see Chris Jericho and MJF wrestle. That's right. Well, and, there's a, and there's a story, too, with the inner circle, the stakes. Uh, will Max be joining the inner circle? What could happen there? Uh well, you know, could and and frankly, uh, that's that's pretty interesting to think about. So there's a lot to this match, but I thought to get conversation going about it, it was brilliant and it worked. And uh, then the town hall segment, which again I worked really closely with Chris on, that was so and good. It paid off great, and uh, it was it was Chris's idea to bring in Eric again, and I was like, that's a great idea. And then I I wrote a lot of this <laughs> stuff, and and Eric, as he said on his show, Eric came in and did he did a little bit of rewriting on the fly, which threw me and Max off a little bit because he told Chris, but he didn't tell us, and. Uh, <laughs> and uh, that doesn't happen ever. <laughs> which is fine. Which is fine. But the time, the timing of it was fine, so I was okay with it. But, uh, um, but and Max didn't miss a beat, and I'm okay with people improving a little bit. And I thought when Eric did his uh, "Ask Not What Your Company Can Do For You," yeah, that was uh, that was not what was originally in there. But the the, the three prong question and Eric B from Cody, Wyoming, and all that. that I came, love that. Yeah, I, I had, so I didn't uh, see that coming. But I had w- worked with this on Chris, and I had the idea of like, well, if you want to bring Eric in, we should have like. Tony announced Eric B from Wyoming. Uh-huh. I, I did not know he was from Cody, Wyoming. I, I had written Eric B from Cheyenne, Wyoming. I was wrong. Uh, okay. uh, Cheyenne, Wyoming, I think, is where uh, Steve Armstrong and the late great Tracy Smothers, God rest his soul, uh, were built from. If I if I recall, yeah. Uh, mm. Wow. Um, the Young Pistols. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's, there you go. How yeah, about that? I grew up on yeah. the Young Pistols. Uh, God bless Tracy Smothers. Absolutely, and, I agree. And the Armstrong family. Uh, and uh, so anyway, I, I just. Uh, Really, uh, going back to that with Eric, I was like Eric B from Wyoming. I just think that's so funny. And when Chris had an idea, he said, "What if we use Eric for this?" It was great. I also uh, had an idea. Um, I wanted to use David Arquette. I thought he would have been good too. Mm. And uh, David Arquette actually was the original person I wanted to use in Peter Avalon's spot of the like, "Could I join the inner circle?" Right. And it would have been, <laughs> but it would have been a very different reaction. It would have yeah. been a very different reaction. Right. They would have like considered it maybe a little more with David Arquette as opposed to Peter a- Avalon. Chris loved what I wrote in my thing when I was like. The hapless Peter Avalon. <laughs> and, uh, he just looked like a sad cat. Yeah, <laughs> but it's like Peter's. Uh, he's been now. He's dejected with what's happened. You know, this thing with Brandon's come to a head, and I think uh, it didn't go his way. And uh, you know, Peter Avalon's a great wrestler. I think we'll see. Sure he Peter's. Is. Uh, uh, he's moved well, way beyond uh, the librarian gimmick, which was an idea for uh, an enhancement wrestler that got given to a guy uh, who's worked his way well beyond that. <laughs> and um, so I, I uh, definitely think g- getting back to this match. That yeah, like with uh, Chris and Max, I just think that uh, the amount of conversation that we, has been generated by this thing is so good for full gear, and right. it clearly paid mm-hmm. off in the town hall segment. So when you asked me about that, you know, I thought the, I loved the idea of Chris and Max singing. I just said right. it has to be on the show as like you guys just break into song, but it's like it works for the characters of Jericho and MJF. Right. It works for the people of Chris and Max. Like they it would worked do, in the build up. It worked in it, in that explicit setting. People like oh the real sports feel, and it's like okay, like I, the Super Bowl shuffle was not real sports feel. <laughs> yeah. uh, like, and <laughs> like a lot of athletes and you know a lot of people in sports have participated in like music videos and sing and things mm-hmm. like that's not unusual at all. And for Jericho and MJF to like break into a coordinated song and they were like looking to the camera. It was right. like, they it was like, they planned it. You know, uh, I think that this the match again could steal the pay-per-view card. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, this is going to be one of uh, the many matches that has a chance to steal the pay-per-view card. I think we could say that about a lot of matches here. I think this one is one of those ones where you just know that it's going to be good. I mean, we're we're talking about the the musical number going as well as it did. It's because those two guys have great chemistry, right? Yeah. So you know the moment the bell rings and they lock up for the first time, it's going to be great. It's going to be amazing. Like, yeah. if you can have two guys sing and eat steak together and it all goes really well and it's very entertaining, like, well, hell yeah, their match is going to be great. Well, yeah, if they, <laughs> especially if it's two guys this good. I mean, Chris and yes, Max are two sure. great wrestlers and, and uh, when they take that, more seriously than anything else. I mean, mm-hmm. that's what's really important about both guys. Like, as, as fun as they are and as great as both of them are at talking, and it, clearly that part of it matters to both of them, uh, Max and Chris are both really, really, really just great craftsmen of wrestling who uh, take it so seriously, and I know that that chemistry is going to carry over. Well, right? that's what it comes down to. Uh, once again, you can sing, you can have town halls, but when you got two great wrestlers in the ring, 
that's what the people want to see, and that's what they want to see with Chris Jericho. And that's why all this build up is yeah, worked because right. like it's all building up to when they do wrestle and to see what happens now with Max and Chris. Speaking of two great wrestlers, Kenny Omega and Hangman Adam Page in the finals of the AEW World Championship Eliminator Tournament. Uh, two men who were, uh, of course, uh, longtime tag team partners and champions. They were the longest reigning tag longest team reigning champs. Longest reigning tag right? team champs. Yeah. They had some great tag team matches. We know what they can do in singles competition. <laughs> the best at, tag team match of all time, actually. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely uh, at Revolution. So now they go at it, and boy, there's a lot of anticipation for oh this boy. one, Tony. It's going to be so good. Yeah. It's going to be absolutely so good. We've been building to this really since almost the beginning of Dynamite, since literally the second and third episodes of Dynamite when Kenny and Hangman started teaming together. I mean, the Kenny and Hangman team uh, is something that came together in the early storytelling of the elite. And I realized then this could be a big story we build and this could be a long-term thing. And I'm so happy it's gone that way because from the beginning, we saw the opportunity. I, I really wanted to do this. And I've, uh, I'm have i like the rest of you. Everybody here is so personally invested in the Kenny and Hangman story. Mm -hmm. And we all want to see where this is going. And so for me, uh, it's been a long time coming. I've wanted to do the Kenny Hangman match on pay-per-view for a long time. And I'm so fired up that we get to do it now. Uh, and it's going to be so great uh, to have Hangman and Kenny, who were uh, great singles wrestlers, who when we started this company, we saw as two of our top stars, for them to have come together and been a team and then been so successful, uh, both successful winning matches, but also so successful in terms of having huge moments, huge ratings for some some big moments, big pay-per-view buys for great things like Stadium Stampede and their match at Revolution, things that were critically and commercially successful. And uh, to have that story and the whole time uh, the seeds were planted uh, up for this dissension and that everyone knew this match, even at Revolution, we teased it uh, yeah. that as they walked out. It was right. a beautiful night. And so uh, it's been such an amazing build. And I think uh, for the Eliminator Tournament, we've had some great matches in the Eliminator Tournament. And to get here and have this be our final, uh, I think it's the final all a large percentage of people, if not the, the majority, if not the vast majority of people wanted to see Kenny versus Hangman. And right. I think uh, that match is as important as any match in this pay-per-view. The winner of that match will get a, a championship match uh, going forward and it'd be the next mandatory contender. And I think that for us, uh, you know, whoever comes out of the, the, the main event world title match out of Moxley versus Eddie Kingston, I think that's going to be a huge, huge uh, obstacle in front of them, to say the least. And I think that uh, Kenny and Hangman are two of our greatest stars, so I'm really excited for this match. Yeah, I, I think if you look at what can potentially come out of it, you could have Moxley against Omega or Moxley against Hangman or Kingston against Omega or Kingston against Hangman. I think you all four matches would be a, a great match. All the four matches are pay-per-view main events. Yeah, sure like, they are. Easily. Absolutely. 100%. Uh, the AEW Women's Championship will be decided. Hikaru Shida will defend against the former champion Nyla Rose. Uh, of course, uh, Vicky Guerrero has been with Nyla Rose at ringside. Nyla is obviously our, a tremendous champion. And uh, since she's been battling Hikaru Shida, Hikaru Shida has found out a little bit more venom, a little bit more uh, determination, I think, since her match with the Rose last and time. She's been it's, a great champion. Yes. She's defended against a lot of top contenders. Uh, she had a great match at Fighter Fest with Penelope Ford. Oh, wonderful. Uh, she's had some great matches. Uh, you know, I, I think Sheeta is a tremendous, tremendous wrestler. I think for us at this point, uh, Nyla Rose coming back into it, she had said she did not want to wrestle on TV again until she got a championship match. So she took herself off the show and uh, caused a ruckus. In fact, when Cody came back, uh, you know, she uh, uh, spilled out into the, uh, which was great. Yeah. Uh, spilled out into the brawl. And I thought, uh, you know what? Uh, Nyla Rose is really got something here. Um, and I really, really thought, uh, that when it came time, when Vicky and Nyla, uh, you know, if this was what was going to take to get them back on TV, uh, it's probably the right thing to do. And Sheeta, uh, as you saw on television was very willing to take the challenge. Sure. And, uh, so I think it's a great match. It's a great rematch of, one of the best uh, matches on one of the best pay-per-views we've had. I right? was going to say, yeah, they they locked up before back at Double or Nothing when uh, Nyla Rose dropped the title to Sheeta in an absolutely incredible match, super hard hitting. It was the no DQ match, I believe. Yeah. And so knowing that they have this long rivalry going 
and seeing what Nyla wants and seeing the the fraught of the fierceness that Sheeta has gained. Like this is oh, they're they're gonna kill each other. <laughs> this could go. And why not? Oh. Yeah, and uh, listen, Nyla Rose has a great presence about her. She does. Oh, wonderful. First time I met her, I knew it. Absolutely. I, I just knew that she had a great presence. And pairing her with Vicky was just fantastic. Yeah, like, absolutely. the two of them are unstoppable. Well, Sheeta, we've seen through these big matches she's had. I mean, Thunder Rosa, Penelope, and, of course, when she won the title from Nyla, she's been uh, one of our top women stars. Mm-hmm. But Nyla has been as successful as anybody in the entire women's division. Nyla is one of the top women's wrestlers in the world. And, uh, you know, uh, clearly it was a credible threat because Vicky and Nyla had pulled themselves uh, out of television and uh, did not want to come to work. So I felt like uh, for us, she's the top contender. It's a great match to put on the pay-per-view. Uh, I, I was really happy to put the match on, and I was glad Sheeta uh, was so so uh, willing on TV to accept the challenge. So that was great. Sheeta just wants to fight. Yeah, that was great. And uh, so that'll be, a, that'll be a fun match, and I'm excited to see how that comes out. And the, the winner of that match will be at the, the top of the women's division. And I think uh, we've got some great new contenders coming in. Yes, we uh, do. We've got the NWA Women's Champion, Serena Deeb, is a full-time member of our roster. Uh, in addition, uh, she's going to be taking on a newcomer here, who, a free agent, Allison Kay, which will be a really interesting match on the buy-in. I think uh, Dr. Britt Baker, your good friend, Tony. I love Doc Baker. <laughs> has, she's established herself <laughs> as one of the top stars, and she's been really on a hot streak since she returned to Dynamite. Mm-hmm. Uh, Big Swole, speaking of Britt Baker, her rival, Big Swole, uh, mm-hmm. beat Britt in the tooth and nail match, and she's got a great record too. So there's a lot of great uh, competition in AEW right now, and I'm excited to see uh, how this one comes out. I think Sheeta and Nyla are probably our two most successful women wrestlers in terms of uh, their win loss records in big matches since we started up, and I think uh, it'll be a great match. We're talking with Tony Khan. We got three more championship matches coming up this Saturday at Full Gear, and we'll talk more about that in just a moment. This is AEW Unrestricted. We're sitting here with Tony Khan, as we do before the pay per views, talking about the card, the amazing card that people can catch this weekend at Full Gear, November 7th, Saturday, Fight, BR Live, pay per view. 8 o'clock, 7 central is when it starts. Cable and satellite providers. There you yeah, go. Absolutely. There Very you go. Yep. There you go. It's it's pretty much everywhere, and you should definitely buy it. Uh, I mean, we've only gone over about two-thirds of the card so far, and we've got three matches left. All of them you could fill the whole pay-per-view itself with. So first I want to touch on the TNT championship, Cody versus Darby. Cody was the original champion, earned it back from Brody Lee in the dog collar match, and now he's facing Darby Allen in the fourth time that they've locked up together. So I'm very personally interested in this match. I've I've been the ref on all of them before, and I've seen firsthand like how hard both of the, those guys fight when they know what is at stake. And now there's a title match on the line. Like This is, this is new territory. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. I'm. Uh, re- that's another great match on the card. Like you said, these last three matches could be a pay-per-view unto themselves. Mm-hmm. That's how amazing the night's going to be. Uh, these guys have had great matches. Uh, it'd be important to point out that Cody's been instrumental in Darby's career. Mm-hmm. As a wrestler. Uh, in It was Cody who really went at Fighter Fest when he had that draw with Darby. Cody wanted to work with Darby. He was excited to do it. And... Uh, he did so much for him in the promotion and the match, and by you know asking for him as an opponent, and I was happy to book it. Uh, I like Darby a lot, and from that match, it's where uh, it started as a company. I took more notice of Darby as somebody we could build around, promote around. And uh, Jericho's told this story before. I don't know if you guys know it, but uh, on our third show in Philly, was, he was going to make his first defense of the title. We'd agreed we'd do it there. And it was like kind of we left an opponent TBD, and I came in and I said, oh, the TBD, I really want Darby. Mm-hmm. And uh, Chris had his doubts, which is amazing because there's all these great people. Chris is like the the coolest person about saying, like, if there's ever something he had doubts about, he'll be the first to come out and say it. So Chris right. is like publicly said, like, he wasn't sure because Darby, you know, he's not the biggest guy. Right. And, and then. Uh, which is so, funny coming from Chris. Well, yeah, but Chris <laughs> is, uh, it's ironic. But then Chris is, uh, he's used to fighting, uh, you know, uh, big opponents is when he's the champion and for his first title defense uh you know he might have been thinking about a more traditional big physical wrestler but darby is a, a physical wrestler uh, the mo- one of the most physical wrestlers really and uh so it ended up being a great choice and we've never looked back in terms of pushing this guy 
And so, like I said, Cody is instrumental in this guy's career to uh, ask to work with him in that spot. And he's always been an advocate for him. And in, in, in the case, like I said, of the first ever uh, title defense in the history of the company on uh, Dynamite in Philadelphia, October of 2019, I really believe Darby was the guy. And uh, Cody was the one who first spotlighted him to me to make me feel that uh, he was ready for that spot. And now here is Darby again. Uh, he's had these matches with Cody since then, and Cody's had his number in the last two. Uh, Tony, you called uh, their match in the TNT Championship Tournament. They wrestled right. in the in the semifinals of the tournament, mm. uh, and Cody uh, kind of snuck by Darby almost. That's right. And uh, it really, it's something that we've then started a lot of other story with because it ha there's been a, an issue that's still going on between Darby and Ta Taz and now Team Taz. Before there was a Team Taz, the original member of Team Taz could have been Darby after that Cody versus uh, Darby match. When we came back May 6th, like so many other great stories, we started on May 6th, uh, Cody versus Darby uh, had just been this great match, and we were going to go into Cody versus Lance Archer to see who was going to be the first ever TNT champion in the finals of the tournament. Taz was, you know, uh, being rather condescending, trying to dispense wrestling advice to Darby, who was uh, pretty dejected and pissed after the way this tournament went down. And uh, I think uh, then we saw Taz took exception to the way Darby brushed him off, and uh, he decided to bring in somebody else. He brought in Brian Cage, and then we've, we've uh, since grown Team Taz with Ricky Starks, and now with uh, those two, uh, they've really made Darby's life a living hell. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've seen Darby really persevere. He had this match with Ricky that, again, you talk about being both critically and commercially successful. They had this great match uh, that was a great match. Did four stars in the Observer, but also did uh, over a million viewers, which is uh, amazing. And in the demo, it was a huge success with a half million viewers consistently throughout the match or more. And uh, it's just really, really a great success story that 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 rivalry they built. But Darby won that match, and the winner of that match was going to be the person in position to wrestle for the TNT title. And now Darby is really at the front of the line. And, you know, as uh, as Cody had said, that uh, he'd beat Darby and send him to the back of the line again. And hmm. I think we all know that Darby's going to have a big moment sooner or later. Right. And he's had some, some great moments, but he that big breakthrough championship win, we know that... Sooner or later, it's going to happen. Uh, will this be it? I think it'd be a lot of people would love to see it, but Cody's also uh, been such a great champion, and right now he's a great champion again. So I think it's going to be one of the most exciting matches, and really Cody and Darby over the last year and a half have built one of the great rivalries in wrestling. Yeah. I, everybody knows how I feel about Cody personally and what a great champion he is, but Darby is like one of these kids that it just seems like when you think – You've beaten him up, and you oh. put him in a heap. He just keeps coming back. He keeps it's, fighting. He's just yeah. he's, never stops. It's incredible. Well, I love uh, his I love reserve. Darby as a wrestler, yeah. and I love working with him. He's an amazing person to work with. He's a really gifted filmmaker. Mm -hmm. Yes, he is and very I, much so. I think uh, he's been uh, treated like a big star here, but Cody is as big a star as there is here, not just in AEW, but in wrestling right now. And I think it's going to be a really great match. Uh, and, you know, for the TNT Championship, our, our Dynamite, our weekly TV is uh, lifeblood of this company. It's our mm -hmm. primary revenue stream, and it's the way we stay in touch with fans for the most part week to week because, you know, we get such great viewership on Wednesday nights on TNT. And the TNT Champion is a really important person in AEW and a really important person in wrestling. So it's uh, going to be a really great match. Okay. Speaking of really great matches, <laughs> AEW Tag Team Championship, the match everyone has wanted to see. And they'll see it. FTR will take on the Young Bucks. Young Bucks come up with the stipulation that if they – Lose, they will never challenge for the tag team title again. Which is insane. We've seen this before. Well, yeah, we Why? have. We Why have would seen you it. do this? Well, I, I think <laughs> I think they've done this because because of what has gone on. I mean, the, the change in attitude of the Young Bucks is mm. all based on FTR, and, and not only what FTR has done, but I mean, there is that professional rivalry that has really been heightened up, and we've seen Matt and Nick do things that normally wouldn't see them do. Absolutely, and uh, so. I think it just makes this match more interesting. It really does. It it almost forces their hand. It does, guys. You got to win it. Okay, you you got to win this match. So, um, 
and you can't buy your way out of this one. No, you can kick and as many but, as you look, want, look, but look, Tony, what I think what makes this match sensational is the contrast in styles. Mm. So, yeah, that's 100%. what makes it a sensational. You know, match. it's two of the best teams, but like you said, they're like uh, on opposite sides of the same coin. It's the yeah. perfect wrestling matchup to have right. uh, this babyface team and this heel team. It's been built up and talked about for years, long before there was an AEW, long before right. I knew I was going to get into the wrestling business. And I'm just really proud that AEW is promoting this match and that we're having it here. And I think it's going to be uh, a great match. I know it's going to be a great match, and I'm uh, I'm really excited for it. I think, again, like we've said about a lot of matches on this card, it could be is a show stealer. But this match in particular mm-hmm. feels like it should steal the show. Yeah. I mean, the phrase dream match gets thrown around a lot, but I think in this case, it is absolutely necessary to use that phrase because I don't think a year ago, any of us would have ever imagined this match happening. Despite, I think anyone who has an appreciation for tag team wrestling wanting this match. Absolutely. So the fact that we're finally getting it, I think is just like, just here, wrestling fans. We love you. Enjoy. Well, great wrestling <laughs> pay-per-view, a great wrestling pay-per-view. See new stories begin but most importantly, I think, is a culmination of great stories mm-hmm. and great rivalries. And in this case, this is a great rivalry. You know, uh, Young Bucks and FTR, it's a great rivalry, and it's going to come to a head with the first ever match. And I think, uh, you know, I, I can't wait to see because it's they built up to locking up for years. Like I said before, AEW was even an idea. So I just think... Uh, it's going to be really awesome. I'm, I'm excited for that match. I'm really excited for that match. It's classic old school against new, and obviously the FTR is not old, but they, they have been a Tully Blanchard, and the fact that they like to use the old school type wrestling style and the rules and everything, it's just a great, great contrast in styles, and looking forward to seeing how that one's going to pan out. Okay, AEW World Championship match. John Moxley, our champion, has been a phenomenal champion for us and, of Wonderful. course, was – uh, just recently ranked the number one wrestler in the world. Uh, no surprise to us. None. We'll, we'll take on Eddie Kingston in an I quit match. And I'm telling you, the, the storyline that's been built up of this one has been tremendous. Oh. And the interviews that we have seen about their past and independent wrestling, how John Moxley went on to be in the entertainment and Eddie was was behind and had to sell his gear to – to make ends meet, it's just it's it's a great story, and I I remember telling Jr. When we went to a commercial break, one of the live shows. I said, I want to see it now. I mean, they they have yeah. got me interested in this storyline, <laughs> and and I just think it's a, to me, and, and you would agree, what makes great storylines not only great athletes, but guys who can talk mm-hmm. and bring you in, and both these guys can talk and have given good promos to us. So. I'm really, really looking forward to this I mean, one. both of these guys are the kind of guys that the moment they have a microphone in their hand and they put it towards their mouth, you just stop and listen because yeah. both of them are just so fantastic at like speaking on a microphone, but they're both phenomenal wrestlers as well. And to just have the two of them building each other up week after week to this culmination is just fantastic. Yeah, and the I Quit match is so perfect oh, too. Oh, wonderful. It goes back to their, their first match, uh, which... Uh, it was a match that not people didn't expect they were going to get to see, and it was a dream match. But I always knew John versus Eddie would be a great match for us. I didn't know that night it was going to be a great match right. for us. But uh, when you know our six man tag main event that night wasn't able to come off, uh, I didn't have to think twice about it. I'd been wanting to do John versus Eddie for a long time. I just right. didn't know that night was going to be the night. But that's uh, you know Eddie had, had come to this company in a very prominent position. Uh, we really, really believe in him and. Uh, he, this guy is a perfect example. When we started the show off and we talked about Serena, Serena is somebody who's come in and been a big star for us in 2020. Uh, nobody's come in and made a bigger impact in 2020 than Eddie Kingston. Right. Hands down. In a short time since he came in this summer, uh, he's become one of the top people in AEW and one of the top people in wrestling. And uh, he's you know very effective as a wrestler. He's very effective as a speaker. He's very effective as a leader. And I think uh, he could be a great champion for us. So... It'll be a great match either way. I think it's it's a personal rivalry, which is uh, you know been manifested in the story that John has been really trying to get Eddie in the ring. He's sent open contracts, which Eddie wasn't a hundred percent. He was smart enough not to send uh, not to send an injured man to do a healthy man's bidding, and you know he sent the butcher, which took something out of Mox. And then uh, again, uh, we've seen you know he's been wise picking his spots after. Uh, the Lance Archer match, he attacked him. Uh, so this whole thing, it's been a great story. But frankly, they're just two great wrestlers, two great uh, two great people in the wrestling business. I mean, both these guys, uh, 
they're real. What you see is what you get, guys. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. right. One hundred percent. What you see on television, uh, these guys are every bit as great in real life. They're uh, such great. Uh, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is. They're mag mag magnetic personalities. Oh, one hundred percent. And uh, I just think people are really You're just really drawn to both of them. And I'm I'm really excited about this. And we've talked through this whole card now, top to bottom. And I think there's so many matches we said we expect could or should steal the show. This match is in that position for a reason. This is the last match on a night of dream matches, and Moxley versus Kingston, I quit. I think it's going to be amazing. And whoever wins this match, uh, they're going to have uh, something in front of them, a real tough challenge with a winner of the Hangman and Kenny match. And exactly. I think it'll be really interesting coming out of this pay-per-view. We're going to have some some great new rivalries, but some, some of our great rivalries we've ever had are going to be uh, a culmination at this show, and I think this one is the true example, the best example of that. And I think with uh, Mox and Eddie, uh, I think it's going to be an amazing main event. Well, top to bottom, we've got eight matches. We've got all AEW uh, championships on the line. We're going to find out who the next challenger is for the AEW championship and that Eliminator tournament. We're going to decide uh, maybe who the NWA World Women's Champion is going to be. We've got Orange Cassidy. We've got eight matches. We've got an elite deletion match top to bottom. It's insane. It is. It's tremendous. It's an uh, absolutely insane card. Before we let you go, I I, I want to know honestly, how do how do you do all this? I mean, uh, Fulham is playing. The 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 Jags are playing, and you got to write TV. Houston's in town you, literally you, the day after. Yeah. The so <laughs> how, how do you cram everything into the week? It's really you, hard. This this week, uh, you know, on Monday, if we count Monday as the start of the week, right? We got it off is to a great start. Right. And uh, with Fulham. Uh, winning and you know we've worked really hard and the team's been playing a lot better recently and right. I think uh, they've been heading in this direction and we were due to win and I was not surprised that we won and I'm really happy we won right and uh, that was uh, a great Monday and then uh, you know Tuesday getting everyone together production meeting it's great mm-hmm. uh, there's a lot of work to be done and I just think uh, last night's show was great right uh, the dynamite before a pay-per-view is so important mm-hmm. and it was a great show uh, and I just love everything I'm doing. I don't really need a lot of free time. I mean, because honestly, this is not work to me. Like I, sure. would, I love, you know, I love what I do. I love wrestling and I love the people I work with. I love you guys. And I'd love to hang out with you. And if, obviously if we were not at work right now, we'd probably all just hang out for fun. Be down right. the hall. Literally down the hall. <laughs> right. Having a beer. So I think this is, uh, this is great. And I, I just, uh, would, you know, I, I don't really, like I said, consider it work. I, yeah. It's so fun for me. It is. It's it's a blast getting together as we do. And we talk about that a lot, how we look forward to getting together. So we're getting ready to uh, to bring you full gear. It's coming up Saturday night, 8 o'clock, 7 Central. Uh, satellite and cable providers, BR Live, Fight TV, fight.tv, that is. Make sure you, you join us. It starts with the buy-in at 7.30, and then we'll take the air at 8 o'clock with the pay-per-view show. I mean, there's just so much on this card. Like, if you haven't paid for the pay-per-view yet already, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. Thanks, guys. I really, it's great to see both yeah. of you, and I'll see both of you on Saturday at Full Gear. Yes, it's going to be a packed day. Thank you for listening to AEW Unrestricted. You can subscribe to our podcast wherever you can find podcasts for your audio ear listening holes. New episodes every Thursday. We have YouTube episodes that go up uh, earlier in the week, Mondays. Just go to youtube.com and search for AEW Unrestricted. And of and course, AW Dynamite each and every Wednesday, 8 o'clock, 7 central on TNT. And for Tony Khan, I'm Tony Schiavone. I'm Aubrey Edwards. Thanks for listening to Unrestricted. See you at the pay-per-view, guys.